Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. And I'm bringing on a bite-sized piece is today, just as the thumbnail suggests, everybody's happy that a Bitcoin ETF is here, but there's some dangers lurking. I wanna talk about exactly what those dangers are so you can get the full picture of exactly what's going on. So we're gonna talk about things to consider. We're gonna talk about, uh, not only is uh, there some information from a uh, pretty high up person, but there's also some bad news. We take a look at history. And then uh, we're gonna talk about last about ways to play it. So today, uh, we'll go over all this stuff, but first take a look at what's in the market. And today's a beautiful day. It's uh, it's Saturday, nice and sunny, everything's going good. And uh, look, if you've been in the market for any length of time, you should be pretty much in the green because market cap right now is around two five, around $2.5 trillion, which is not too shabby. We like to see these numbers. And uh, I mean, Bitcoin price is bouncing around 61,000 almost. I, I mean, even with uh, with Plan B, he said it would. Uh, he was talking about how it would close out at sixty four thousand. Shoot, we're almost there. We're looking pretty good. The thing that gets me, and we're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. If you want to use your fundamental, your technical, and sentiment analysis, use Trade the Chain. Links in the description gets you a whole picture of uh, if you're a big trader. But the thing that that makes me sit up and take notice is this: the Bitcoin daily sentiment and the average daily sentiment. It's not that super high. We were in the 70s uh, not too long ago when we were pretty much bearish. And now that things are moving in the right direction, price action's going good, ETF is here, that sentiment number should be higher. And they get this from scraping all the different blog posts, all the different exchanges, uh, 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 medium sources. Uh, they have a direct API into uh, Twitter. So this is pretty accurate as far as like a daily sentiment. So why is it? I think there's a lot of people just like me who look at this and go, you know what? I don't really know if this is the big thing. So let's just jump into it today and just talk about, you know, just take a look at it from all sides. So let's take a look at, yes, <laughs> there is a Bitcoin futures ETF. And this was from CNBC last night around 6 p.m. I think it was uh, Eastern time, but uh, it says, hey, great news. Uh, the pro shares Bitcoin strategy ETF, which will give exposure to Bitcoin futures contracts, but not the spot market. We'll trade under the ticker BITO, B-I-T-O. And then uh, there's a nice little uh, snippet here where it talks about uh, ProShares Bitcoin ETF slated to debut on Tuesday. And uh, we, don't, we don't know exactly when it's going to trade. I mean, some people say Monday, some people say like Tuesday or Wednesday, but whatever, it's here. And it looks like uh, the SEC has actually uh, approved a futures ETF. And that's great, right? That's what we've been all been talking about for a long time. I think it'd be better if it was about spot, not just about futures. I think a lot of people would agree with me on that one. And these are the things to consider. So yes, the price is going up and yes, everything's great, but there's always a flip side to every story. So these are the things to consider. And I took up and I take notice of people who have been there and done that, made a ton of money. And this was from uh, Ricardo Salinas. He is the second richest man in Mexico, billionaire, done some pretty big things in the, uh, in the financial industry. And he says, look, there's some warning signs. And uh, he says, futures ETF is prone to manipulation. This is exactly what he says. This is in his tweet. He says, Bitcoin's about to break 60,000 in US dollar. The Bitcoin futures ETF news is actually bad in my opinion, because what is needed is a real Bitcoin fund, not an easily manipulated futures fund. And right now people are gonna say, uh, they're gonna start screaming at the at the <laughs> at the screen like, well, that guy's just manipulating too by spreading FUD. Maybe, but look, if there's anybody who knows about manipulation, it's probably this guy. And I was talking to my wife today. She's uh, she's in a volleyball tournament uh, all the way across the across the country, and uh, she is Mexican, 100% Mexican. She was born and raised in Juarez, Mexico, and she started laughing. She goes, "If anybody knows about manipulation," It is Ricardo Salinas, because if you're from Mexico, this is not a shocker. And if you're not, just so you know, uh, uh, if you have uh, all the different problems and manipulation and corruption, what's great about Mexico, it's all in the open. It's fantastic. Like someone, get, you know, you get pulled over, like give me 50 bucks, I'll let you off. Great. Uh, in America, it's a little bit different. Manipulation and the things that go on are behind closed doors and maybe between people in dark, shadowy rooms and congressmen and congresswomen. And that's the difference between uh, America and Mexico. So we were laughing about it. She's like, look, if anybody knows about it, corruption, it's uh, Ricardo. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, what else do you got to say? According to him, a Bitcoin futures ETF could prove fatal to the asset's price as it gives big institutional investors the power 
to use excess leverage, buying and then dumping the asset, thus suppressing price. And that's where, you know, we get from, from leverage traders, right? They want to do 10x, 50x, 100x. And they're like, well, if I can move the market in a certain way, I can make a boat, a boat, a boat load of money just by shorting it. And it happens all the time. And uh, remember, we're only at two and a half trillion. So even the traditional market uh, in equities gets manipulated all the time. And that is a hundred trillion dollars. So I'm not saying that the price is going to go flat or going to go down or going to go up. I'm just saying that this is the side. There's two sides of every story. And he finally he talks about this. I've been trading futures for over 40 years. It's all paper based. Any big bank can post enormous trades based on margin without ever taking delivery. That happens in the gold market today. Futures become disconnected from cash. And yes, uh, just so you know, this is going to be physical Bitcoin that people are going, someone has to have to custody it. And then of course the clients can do whatever they want to. So this isn't just straight up paper, but if you can do leveraged trading, what could that mean? Well, that could mean uh, some pretty bad news. And that's just that part. And it made sense to me. And I'm like, well, maybe he's manipulating a little bit by spreading FUD. But uh, like, again, if anybody knows about it, it's probably him. And he's already been trying to uh, to maintain or to put in Bitcoin as legal tender. But of course, the Bank of Mexico stopped him. So uh, it's in his best interest or the Bank of Mexico, the government of Mexico stopped him and uh, said, no, you, we, we're not going to do that. So it's in his best interest to actually uh, make things go in the right direction and not just call this out. So that's the first part of it. Now let's talk about some more bad news. And there's going to be some good news at the end, so don't worry. So this one is from Pantera Capital CEO, Dan Moorhead. And he talks about this. He goes, uh, first of all, they've got billions of assets under management, uh, digital assets. And he says, will someone please remind me the day before the Bitcoin ETF officially launches? Uh, I might want to take some chips off the table. Why did he say that? It's because of this. Morehead pointed out that the Wall Street adage of buy the rumor, sell the fact is currently playing out in the crypto industry. He highlighted the Bitcoin rally of over 2,400% before the day Bitcoin futures were listed on the CBOE, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, in 2017, followed by an 83% bear market. So uh, that leads me to the next point, which is this. Uh, and we'll go back and forth. When was the CBO, CBOE, when was it listed as far as futures? Not ETF, but futures exchange. That was on Sunday, December 17th. And this was a pretty funny article. Bitcoin de debuts in the world's largest futures exchange and prices fall slightly. Not a big deal, right? Well, if you were around at that time, you know it was a big deal because that was the 17th, right? So buy the rumor, sell the fact. We're looking at 13th of December, 2017. We're at 16,000. Then we hear about this CBOE nonsense. 14th goes up. It topped out at almost 20,000 on the 15th. 16th, okay, it's about to launch. Launches on the 17th, and what happens? Boom, big dump. It'll recover, boom, it'll recover, blah, 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 and then crypto winter comes along. So don't just think that this is like, oh, this is the greatest thing of all time, and, and now the institutions are going to get here, and we're going to be set, and uh, no. The thing is, as long as greed and manipulation is out there, these things can and will happen. Not to say that it will absolutely happen, but it can happen. And then to finish this up, he states, uh, this year, just to take a look at this year, the Bitcoin market rose 822%, coming to the day of Coinbase's NASDAQ listing, peaking at 64.8 that day, and then a big bear dump. So what he talk, he's talking about here is that when Coinbase was listed, that was the date of the very first day, was Wednesday, April 14th. April 14th, right there. Okay. Well, April 14th, what happened around that time? Well, we were looking pretty good. So excuse me, let me go back. Uh, so it looks like we've got uh, 20th of February and we're doing, you know, up and down, up and down. Uh, here we go into uh, March. And then uh, we hear these rumblings of Coinbase and what's gonna happen. So it comes down a little bit, but then they start to buy the rumor. And 25th of March comes up here. Hey, Coinbase is gonna get listed. This is the exact date. And then we're up here, 12th, 13th, 63,576, the 14th, 62,000 when it got listed and then bam, just dumps off. Now there's some other factors that play into that. I believe uh, that was around the time of uh, the China FUD and things like that. And just kind of just take a big dive. So that one's not too much, uh, I would say like a, a super big correlation, but it is something to consider when we take a look at buy the rumor 
and sell the facts. So that's what it comes down to. And then lastly, I will just say this. So all the things that we talk about, it's just something to put into uh, your repertoire of information and you can uh, make the best decision for you. So there's two ways to play it. Now, um, when the CBOE, that 2017, you have to remember that was after a enormous, enormous parabolic bull run. So I, I kind of feel like there, it was due anyhow, uh, and that just kind of played into it. And then the smart mind is like, well, this is just overplayed and we'll just uh, manipulate the living tar out of it. Then off it goes. And uh, then there was a uh, crypto winner for three long years. I don't think we're going to see those types of things. But that is just my investment opinion, not investment advice. So if you uh, just want to hold and just see where it goes, you can do that. Me personally, me personally, I am uh, selling just a little bit and it's very little because I am um, trying to fund a project that I'm getting into for an inve another investment property and uh, they don't take Bitcoin. So right now I think is a, is a good way to take some chips off the table and uh, it's not a lot, but it's enough to where I feel comfortable. Like if it goes down, like, hey, it went down, uh, you know, at least I took some, some chips to the table or, hey, it went up. Well, I didn't sell uh, much at all. And that's really the two ways that I see these things going. And that is it. So look, uh, if you made it all the way to the end, I want to say thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is extremely time sensitive and uh, it's only going to get faster as time goes on. So thanks so much. Uh, I appreciate it. See you in the next one.